Wesson Hill. Hey guys, good morning. How y'all doing? We got uh, good morning. We got Wesson out here today. We're doing a maintenance training session out in a local farmers market. We call this distraction work. So in this maintenance training session, one of the things I'm looking for nope, is uh, number one, body adherence to me. So as I'm maneuvering through the crowd here. We got dogs, we got kids, we got people. Nope, we got all kinds of stuff going on. If he's not maintaining good alignment with me, if he's not maintaining good heel position, I'm gonna say no and apply accountability for disobeying that heel position like we always do. Um, if I see a dog like that, that's kind of getting into my way, I will move out of the way, right? So I gotta make sure uh, that I have good situational awareness, good environmental control to make sure that it's uh, a good experience for me a good experience for him. Keep in mind our fundamental training protocols. If he's doing the right thing, we're gonna say good. We're gonna randomly reward him. That could be with either physical touch or food reward. If he's disobeying me, like breaking heel position, or, uh, you know, uh, that's basically what it would be right now, breaking heel position. But if I put him in a down stay, if he breaks that down stay, we're gonna follow up with a verbal no and accountability, okay? So as I finagle through this farmer's market, Again, this is a maintenance training session. He, he knows all the behaviors. He knows all the expectations in this type of scenario and environment. So as I maneuver through the farmer's market, that's basically what I'm doing. Just maintaining the fact that you stay with me. If you do the right thing, you get a random reward. If you're disobeying us, you're gonna get held accountable through correction, okay? I'm also maintaining very good environmental awareness on what's going on around us uh, to, again, build as many positive experiences with him as possible without something bad happening like let's say there's a dog in the crowd that wants to grab a hold of him i want to make sure i maintain enough distance from other dogs in the crowd where that's not going to happen okay one thing i'm going to demonstrate up here is a uh, downstay eye contact drill one second right here okay. so up here we're going to do a downstay eye contact drill right by the sign so i'm just going to walk up to the sign here i'm going to stop Wait for him to automatically sit. If he doesn't do that, I'm going to say no. Give a correction. Wesson down. Good. Wesson stay. Okay. So as I maneuver around here, what I'm looking for is... All right. Good to see you guys. Uh, what I'm looking for is eye contact on me. All right. So we got this corgi walking by. Good. He's making good eye contact with me. I can say good, provide a food reward. Then I back up, move to a different position. Okay. Good. Notice how he's now tracking me as I move around. So in this type of training drill, I'm going to be providing more food rewards than I normally would because I want to build upon that eye contact in a distracting environment, okay? It's also getting a little bit warm out here, so I am paying attention to how long he's in the sun. And good. And the, the temperature on the pavement and the environmental factors around me. So I just come down and do a quick temperature check. Good. Pavement's nice and cool. No factor yet because we're not out here nice and early. Also notice as I'm doing this down the eye contact drill, he just kicked his hips over, which is telling me that he's getting more comfortable in the environment. All right, so that's just an example of a drill we would be doing. I'm gonna keep moving here. Wesson heel. All right, so I go back to heel position. I'm continuing to finagle through the farmer's market here, maneuver around. Lots of dogs, lots of people, lots of stuff going on, okay? We got a dog coming up right here on the left with a, uh, Corey, what's up, man? You guys doing all right? What's up, bro? Yeah, man. You guys doing all right? Yeah. You guys doing some hangout sessions? Yeah, good to see you guys. It's going good. I'm shooting this video real quick. I'll come back and catch you guys. All right, so there was a dog over there on the left. Uh, that leash, if that dog wanted to come over and grab a hold of uh, Wesson, he could have ran over here and made contact with him uh, based on the length of leash. So I'm paying attention to that as I'm, what's up, brother? What's up, man? You doing all right? I tried to get in there this morning. They had it closed, locked down. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, you're paying attention to that stuff. I just had two dogs walk by. The people with those dogs were maintaining a tight leash, but if those dogs lunge at him, they could still make contact with him, okay? So all these things are going through your head as you're doing these different types of training sessions. At a certain point, once you work with your dog enough in these kind of sessions, you'll build up a baseline layer of understanding and trust to where you know what your dog's gonna do in different situations. And that's one of the other purposes of these training sessions and maintenance sessions is understanding what is my dog's baseline level. So as you follow a good training progression when it comes to socialization and distraction work, you're building your baseline understanding of how your dog is responding to different stimuli and things around you, okay? 
So notice as I'm moving through the crowd, literally no factor, he's right on my leg, all right? He's maintaining perfect position. So my baseline understanding of how he's operating is that he's maintaining position, not testing me, not deviating. Okay, that may not be the case with every dog at every level of training. That's just something you gotta pay attention to. Something else you're paying attention to is like a noise making device like this one right here that makes loud, sudden noises. You're paying attention to that because you don't know how he's gonna react when you pass by that, by that device. You don't know how he's going to respond when that thing makes crazy noises. Some dogs may want to get away from that. Some dogs are cool just walking by it, but you can build up that tolerance as time goes on, depending on your dog, okay? We do the stop, we get the automatic sit. Good boy. Lesson down. Lesson stay. Okay, so we go back into another down stay. We go back into an eye contact drill. So if he makes eye contact with me, I'm gonna say good and reward him. One of the most valuable things we can have from our dog, good, is good eye contact, is default behavior of eye contact, uh, no matter what's going on around you. Get that hip rock relaxation right there. Okay. One of the hardest things for a dog to do is when you're behind them, give you eye contact. Okay, so notice how I'm kind of loitering behind him right now. I just want to see if he's going to turn around and look at me. All right, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Just kind of depends on the, the amount of time that we put into these eye contact drills and also his state at the, uh, at the time. All right but you want to build this up over time to where your dog will good look at you if you're behind them, okay? The more you build up this eye contact drill, the better your dog gets at eye contact and the less issues you have with any types of distractions, okay? So I hope you guys took some informa good information away from this video. Again, maintenance training session and distraction work, maintaining a level of training. If y'all have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, see you in the next one.